All right, what's up, guys? It's Kaylin. I'm backstage at the Vic with Noah Khan. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for like talking to me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you coming down to the venue. Um, and I'm also sorry you have to look at this black eye that I gave myself. You gave it to yourself. I did. Oh my I, gosh. I, I'm thought the it was like, I thought it was makeup. I was like, oh, that's cool. I wish it was makeup, yeah. but you have to look at this while we while we talk, and I'm sorry. Oh my that. gosh. Well, I hope you're okay. It looks <laughs> like it's healing at least. <laughs> It is healing. How are you doing? Good, yeah. Um, excited for the show. Here we are in Chicago. Um, get ready for the show. You know, excited. Just got off of a plane, so I'm kind of shaking off the smell. That's and the fair. Feeling. You can relax. We're okay. just gonna do a chill thing right now. All right, all right. I'm chill. All right. So first of all, mental health check. Are you sleeping? Are you drinking water? How do you feel? Because you, you're I'm, busy. I'm doing all those things, but I feel like it's not the mental health doesn't improve like you those are kind of the things like oh if i drink and sleep i'll get a, i'll feel better and then like, i got drink and i sleep and then like i still feel bad sometimes so that that's super fair right now i'm like okay now i just need to take vitamin b but i'm not gonna do it for a while so i can have for the that energy b. yeah so i can have like a thing that might fix it but not having to do it so i because it's obviously not going to are you taking magnesium that's another one that everyone's okay like, i was gonna oh, say like, your dog died <laughs> you tried taking magnesium that'll make everything better um but yeah no not yet i'm b12 magnesium those are all on my list Okay, my bucket list. so I feel super comfy saying that I have to like brag on you for a second, which may be uncomfy for you. However, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you and Taylor Allison Swift are the two best songwriters of our generation. That is incredibly sweet. I, uh, I'm i not lying wow. to you. I wish I was. No, me too. You should receive that. No. Uh, <laughs> you should receive that in the best way. I'm processing it, and it's like <laughs> hitting this wall and just coming right, going right away from my brain. I, can't, like, I don't know. It's hard to like yeah. objectively look at my own work and like think about like where it stands in comparison to especially someone like Taylor. Like That's in a very, very sweet compliment, and... I'm honored to be, you know, have my name even in the same sentence. So thank you very much. It's true. I don't, yeah, I appreciate that a lot. That's it's been really cool to see the uh, Taylor Swift fans find my music, and that's been really awesome. And um, I take it all as a huge compliment because she's such an amazing songwriter. Yeah. So I found you separately, but I will say like two things that I look for in a good songwriter is a, um, you guys paint a picture. Like I can see it when mm -hmm. I'm listening to your music, and b. I just feel like y'all, both of you two, can describe my emotions better than I can describe my emotions. Do you feel like that about anyone that you listen to? Like, shocked that, like, you're like, oh, my God, you're in my head, basically. Yeah, for sure. I think about that with Phoebe Bridgers and yes! all the time. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to inner thigh you. End the shit. I'm about to be. My apologies. <laughs> just end it. No, Stop no. this interview. I got all, excited because I love good. Phoebe. No, I appreciate that. I haven't, like, it's cool. Like, human touch and everything is awesome. <laughs> You um, need eight touches a day, God, if you that. didn't know. Oh, my God, I'm so alone. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> like, Phoebe Bridgers is an artist that, like, all, it just really makes me feel like I'm living, she's living in my head. Like, me, too. She'll sing a lyric. I'm like, I had, you know, I wasn't in that exact experience, but the emotion and the feeling that she's trying to get across are, like, very specific, but also relatable to me. And, you know, Bonnie Iver when I was younger, and still, but, like, someone yeah. that I, an artist, uh, sorry, a band, Justin Vernon, an artist that I yeah. always just felt like, spoke to me um same with connor oberst i think that's why i love oh my god you're inside yeah. my brain I'm my in little head. brain i'm in your head uh, so i saw him once and he cried while he was playing a song oh wow um, he, he cried connor oberst yes that's, uh that, bright what, eyes what song was it do you remember um god he it was the song i can't remember the name where he was describing um with a hoodie on when he's smoking a cig walking god what is the song could be he just named like every no, single bright eyes song i know right <laughs> but um i saw him once live at a small show and he started crying and i was like oh shit like you're the real that girl. would be really cool i think what i love most about, speaking of that like i love these artists vulnerability in their song like you can tell sometimes that like it's painful the things they sing about but they still do that because it means something to them and in doing that it means a lot to us as listeners um 100%. i think that's why i love phoebe just because obviously connor was a big yeah. inspiration for her um i didn't know that but yeah they did you know they, they did better <laughs> building community center which was like the project they did together which yeah. is really incredible um so artists like that that just make me feel heard and like make me feel understood and then also like like you said like i love being transported to a different place and those yeah. artists do a great job of i that. call it like sad girl music with all due like yeah, i'm like sure. oh okay so i'm gonna listen to my sad girl music they swim in the deep end and i'm mm -hmm. like okay I feel that when we're talking about Taylor, I just have to like segue because the last cover that you posted, aside from the Taylor cover that you posted, was Post. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Then you had a song with Post. Mm -hmm. 
So then you posted a Taylor song and you're on the same label. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not doing anything. Like it just feels like maybe at some point y'all are destined to have a little, if I know Taylor and I don't. I certainly, yeah, this, it would be she very Taylor of her to reach out to me like tomorrow morning. Right. And be like, um, let's be sad girls together. No, I wish I could say that there was some like genius marketing strategy happening, but I. I don't think there is, no. but I think it will organically. I had just been to her concert happen. and then I I, we, I was like, the thinking, I just been thinking about the concert so much and like how cool it was. It was such a, it was such like a, just like a powerhouse performance of like so many different songs. She's able to like she has a complete understanding of who she is as an artist and like how she's observed by her yeah. fans and like gives them what they want to believe about her, which is really mm-hmm. amazing. Like she really is who they think she is, which is a really special thing, especially nowadays. Which is rare. Which is rare. And yeah. uh just was kind of in awe the entire time. I had never been to a Taylor Swift concert and like <laughs> she just crushed it and like the energy was so good the entire time. Like usually there's a point in you know, her show's three hours. Like there's a point in every set where you're kinda like you and the fans are both like we could both just go home right now, you know, like, like, like my feet hurt. Get the fuck out of here. You don't want to, you don't want to go home. But she like was so engaged and she was living for every moment of it. And some of the songs, like the arrangements of the the music were like, I heard the songs in a new light and you know, I'm like a big folklore stand. And so I was like listening to a lot of those songs. I was actually caught in a flash flood listening to this is me trying. And, uh, that's so you are, you're a sad girl. I was like thinking like, this is me me. dying. Like the fucking water was, (laughs) Like rising. This is me drowning. Me. This is me drowning in a flood. Right. Uh, and uh, so I, well, I, that song like meant to me that moment, and I wanted to cover it. And um, you know, it's one of those things where like I would absolutely love. In a, in a million years, I couldn't imagine myself getting a chance to collaborate with someone like that. And if it could happen, it'd be incredible. But I'm just a really big fan, and I, you know, it's I fair. think it's fun to just be a fan, you know, and not have everything have yeah. to be like some kind of like end game. No, it doesn't. Goal. I didn't think you were like promoting something. I no, was no, just no, no, saying no. like same label. Y'all are both sad girls in my like mute. Yeah, we're music sad girls jump. for yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> you're a sad girl. I'm a sad girl at the end of, at the end of it all. That's fair. Yeah, that's really fair. So, do you have like, uh, so? obviously all your songs are deep as fuck Mm -hmm. um do you have a lyric that you're most proud of or like a song that's hard for you to sing just because yeah there are a few songs that are hard for me to sing just because i write them about really specific incidents in my life or people that happen to people i love and it's like you can't help but you know remember those feelings that brought the song to light when you're singing them but like that like we just talked about like I think it's important to like be vulnerable and to like show people the yeah. moments that are hard for you because it allows them to kind of be okay with fr- their own grapplings with those feelings. Um, I like playing a song. There's a song I have called Howling, which is really sad. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard to hear it myself sing that because it's like, man, I yeah. truly felt this way. You were in like point. a yeah. dark. Like this, how, this was like, I clearly needed help like beyond just writing a song and like I listening to that song and, and playing that song kind of makes me feel like I'm back there again. Yeah. Even though I'm not, but it makes you feel like yeah, you are. Like, please don't be the back there. No, right? get a, get me <laughs> out of there, you know? <laughs> I'm a snorter. Yeah, um, you're good. Shit. Okay. So you, you have the sad songs. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like, I just need to make sure, like, how is this all feeling? Because you went from zero to two million, I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty insane. Like, I mean, we you know we've been touring for a long time, and I've, I've my third album. You know, I've, I felt like, you know, I feel like they tried to make you pop. I was tr- like, they no. tried to. They said the big wig <laughs> sat me down in a smoky room, really? and they said, "You need a beat." You're gonna and be like, pop. The Jew like boy. the like shh, like the you know when you're in the club and like the the air comes out like the beat drops and like there's like the I think they tried to make you one way and I felt like yeah wasn't. yeah they're like you're so <laughs> conventionally attractive you look just like a pop star like this is the right p- path for you yeah. um no I, I I just I have been I've always had an idea of what my career would look like and like this whole like this kind of year has wait not what was your idea of what your career would look like. I feel like that's interesting. I figured to like know. the pretty typical Mark Wahlberg and the rocker, <laughs> you know, big success, tragic Wake up at downward 4 spiral. Pray to God. Yeah. Like do some like bench presses. Yeah, yeah. Ben- a lot of bench presses. Yeah, <laughs> um, same. No, I guess I just always thought like I would be someone who could sell a, f- a thousand tickets in a room and, and, you know, people would stream my albums every once in a while and I'd be on some playlists. But I never figured like I'd be putting <laughs> into, into these like, you know, 20,000 capacity rooms or like being on the radio in a big way. And um, it's been really exciting because it's everything you ever dreamed of. But like no matter how f- 
far you go or how the Feels heights weird, you reach, like probably you're still just yourself. And like my problems are still my problems. And like my brain is still, you my look brain. in the mirror and you're like, I'm still Noah. Yeah. Like, that's how I like look at myself. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, I have like a nicer brown jacket now and that's about that's it. But I'm still, it's more expensive. It's more expensive. It's a nice. Jacket. Yeah. That's um, fair. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely hard to reconcile like what I thought my life would look like to how it looks like right now. And that's yeah. been a challenge, but also exciting because it, it presents me with like a chance to grow and to, cope and manage and you're those are such things a therapy I boy i love that i am my mom's a therapist yeah, and like words. i know you're in therapy love so bomb <laughs> whatever <laughs> all the therapy words yeah. you like trigger like all the all the words codependent we're gonna use them all great. Yeah, yeah for sure i was like a, a second grader and i was like my mom's a therapist so i was like you're being codependent and like the kindergartners are like what the fuck are you like, talking stop being about? so healthy yeah they're bully like, me <laughs> Okay, so so your music I thought related to me because I'm a sad girl. Mm -hmm. Um, However, when you came out with Tile Drunk, um, so I this is weird, but my ex boyfriend got arrested for Uh, being drunk um, uh, and doing dumb shit, mm -hmm. and I was his one call because I'm a little bit older than you. However, you used to have to remember people's phone numbers. Yeah, for sure. Which sounds crazy. Yeah. Um, However, so I was his one call. He called me because it was all he could remember. My phone was sitting on the table at a party um, because that's who I am. As a person, I just like leave my phone on a table. And my best friend picked it up, saw it was my ex, goes, hello, hung it up, even though it was his one call. She was like, no, you're not going to talk to Kaylin. Hung it up. And then he never had a call again. This is just like the song. Yeah. And I found out three years later from my ex that like my best friend, Jen, shout out. She's protective. However, ruined my ex. Trent's life um, when she picked up the phone and hung up he had to spend a night in jail so I was like are you inside of my brain or no whoa yeah that sounds like that's specific. so specific. Is that like what happened to you or no? It didn't even happen to me. Like I think <laughs> oh, I, maybe I could we talk at some point. Yeah. <laughs> like, Are you I, my ex? <laughs> yeah. Oh, frick. That's crazy. Uh, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. No, I, I think like. That literally happened. I think it is an experience that everyone can relate to. Like, you know, b- being desperate or like feeling like you could fix something by doing the complete wrong thing. Like, you know, it's wrong, but it feels like in your heart, like the right thing to do. Yeah. And like, I'm sure your ex was like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's, I, let's I mean, speak of therapy. Yeah, you know, you he just only remembered my number. But. Right. Like when you're like <laughs> you can be a villain and also have good intentions at the same time yeah. and be executing them in the wrong way. I think that's what the song really is. It's like looking to do the right thing, but doing it in the complete wrong way at the complete wrong time and maybe even with the wrong person. So I, that's yeah. kind of what the song is about. You're self-deprecating, which I think is the best ever. Mm-hmm. I have an exciting thing to tell you. I don't know if you'll be excited, but... Um, so I'm on the morning show on Kiss FM in Chicago. Ooh. Okay, so I have been begging my bosses to play your music for a while. I fell in love with you with Stick Season. And um, today I won my fight. And nice. I think in like 20 minutes, um, I recorded a break. And we're going to play your song on Kiss FM for the first time. I introed it. And uh-huh. um I got them to play it, so it's exciting for me at least. Um, I'm yeah. so happy for you. And for you. I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm very honored. Thank you You're very much. You're about to be played in 20 minutes on on a top 40 station uh, in Chicago, so I'm proud of you. And it's I'm, a dream come true. Thank you so much for fighting for the song. I appreciate that. Of course. All your songs. 